What's up, everybody? This is Solo the God, and this is CTG Gaming, where I give you all the sauce that I get about Cookie Run Kingdom. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about toppings. Uh, I get a lot of questions on Discord about toppings and substats, so I figured this would be a good place to start. Uh, first and foremost, if you don't know, you should know the best place in the game to farm is 829 because it drops uh, the attack toppings and the damage resist toppings. You also want to farm. 828 for the bouncy caramels and 825 for the swift chocolates i tell you to farm everything in one map so you can just keep it simple for yourself like you don't want to just be bouncing all over the map paying different prices for all that good crap um so just keep it simple and you won't have nothing to worry about all right moving on to when you guys are collecting your toppings you should really start like thinking about your topping efficiency. And with that being said, level everything up to six. If at six you pull debuff resist, crit resist, or amplify buff, sell it. Um, for this video, we're gonna all be concerned about what our substats are because we're trying to build stronger cookies so we'll have a 50 percent uh criteria on our toppings for the sub rolls so with that being said let's go to one of these toppings if you hit any of the desirable stats like attack or attack speed or crit. If they are less than half, toss it. If they're half or more, keep it. You can level it up further whenever you see fit. If you roll damage resist, a high damage resist roll, especially, uh, cooldown or attack, those are pretty good to roll. Prioritize the damage resist and the cooldown toppings. Uh, the cooldown subs. I'm sorry. Alright, so what subs are actually good? And what do they do? Uh, we all know the big three. Damage resist, cooldown, and attack. Uh, tied in at third with attack. However, is attack speed and crit. Uh, people are not going to tell you attack speed. They don't want you to know that attack speed is that great. Because attack speed is amazing. Uh, if you haven't ever paid attention to PvP and watched exactly what the attack speed team does, it shows you right there why, why attack speed is such a good stat. So, with that said, uh, you want to check out how good the toppings are and know what you want to do with that cookie at the end of the day. Like, and when I say at the end of the day, I don't mean like what you're building it for right then. I mean like built with your end result in mind. So you're probably not going to use Vampire Cookie in your PvP team for very long, for real. Uh, eventually you'll get a better team set up and you'll want to play that because it's more fun. So you're not going to really want to invest your best toppings in something like him. But you do have stat thresholds that you need to make. And being aware of those stat thresholds makes uh, doing your toppings a lot easier. So I'm going to give you the stat thresholds on three of the main cookies in the game. I call them the main cookies in the game because they basically carry you through all the content. I mean, there are a few, uh, a few replacements. And I will call them temporary replacements because these are the best of what for what they do. But we'll just get into some particular builds for these guys so you can see how optimizing your PvE opens up more potential for your PvP team and how substats really work for you. So vampire cookie. He needs eight cooldown for guild battles. Guild battles 
is probably the most important thing that he does in the game besides boss killing. And as long as you chuck damage on him, he'll pretty much just kill bosses. So you were really worried about him for uh, guild battles. Uh, his cooldown needs to be 8 because you want him to have time to do his double vamp thing in later stages. And triple, even quadruple vamp in earlier stages. So you can solo dragons. Uh, the other stats that you're going to worry about on him are going to be crit, attack, and attack speed. This guy does not need damage resist at all. If you get someone there, that's cool. But he doesn't need them because eventually, if you're using him in PvP, you won't. And you won't in a few months. You won't probably in, an, in another month, honestly, because there are way stronger cookies coming out. They might not be the better single target DPSs, but they're like way stronger cookies and way better comps than a vampire comp. So with that said, you don't want to waste any of your best toppings on him or any of your high efficiency toppings. You just want to make sure you break his stat threshold of three cooldown. I mean, of eight cooldown and then give him as much of attack, crit and attack speed as possible. Now, knowing what each cookie does and how they benefit from different stats is another way to determine what substats that you want on them. For example, uh, I'm working on this Tiger Lily and we're, we're running her with attack speed jellies because attack speed increases your casting speed. So the faster you cast, the more whatever you're doing is getting done. And ideally, I want her to counter something. Uh, Maybe I'll get into a video about that later on. It's a concept that I'm working on with one of my friends on Discord, and I don't know how he feels about you know broadcasting that yet. So I'll talk to him about that. Maybe we'll bring that to y'all in another video. But yeah, so let's get into licorice. Licorice, you want this guy to have 20 cooldown, 25 total with his uh, set effect because you want him to cast the minions for the uh for the dragon and guild battle at the right moment and you want him to have it pretty often and for those of y'all that's just worried about minion spam 15 cooldown is all you need for that with a max watch uh it's probably a little bit less than that but 15 is like a comfortable number that's the same toppings i got and put on him when i first started the game so I honestly just don't use Lico that much anymore, but I should. Uh, so his important substats are going to be damage resist, cooldown, and depending on where you want to use him, like eventually because he's one of those cookies that's good for PvP throughout the entire game, uh, you can put attack and attack speed on him so he can do more damage, or you can go HP and defense subs to help his minions tank better you don't really worry about uh the minions with attack substats because they scale poorly on his attack anyways so you can just focus on those uh amplify buff is honestly not a bad sub on him because uh amplify buff just pretty much his buff gets increased by how much ever percentage that you know you have in amp buff so uh, having some there is okay. It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you can even argue that an amp buff build could be pretty decent. Last but not least is going to be Dark Choco. So we're going to go with three almonds and two swift chocolates on this guy. Because like I said, these three guys are going to carry you throughout pretty much all the content. But eventually, you're going to just only use these guys for PvE content. So, you don't want to invest your best toppings on them. You want to get, you want to meet their stat thresholds with as minimum investment as possible. So, that's why the stat, the sets. Uh, for Choco, his two main, uh, his two main substats are, of course, damage resist and cooldown. You want him to have... 10 cooldown and that's not very taxing with two cooldown toppings so you're free to pretty much stick whatever subs on him 
Uh, for damage resist, you do want to get him at least at 25. Better if you can get it higher because 10, 31 DM is pretty tough. And the upper towers, the upper tiers of Cake Tower don't give you your treasure. So you kind of want him casting fast enough and tanking enough to survive and get off that extra damage. Uh, the other two stats that you should really worry about on him are going to be attack and defense. Uh for obvious reasons attack but defense is just to further solidify how beefy he is with the three almonds if you guys don't have those staple cookies uh there are a few replacements that you can use i would highly suggest like just spending the mileage not on vamp because you can farm here pretty early in dark mode and it only take you like a week or two, like depending on if you refill with crystals and stuff. But the other guys are definitely worth spending mileage on because they'll carry you pretty much through the PVE content, early PVP until you find better. But if you need an alternate for vamp, Rye is an excellent replacement and also adventurer cookie. All right, now don't shoot me because this is really not a replacement. You can't replace licorice. But if you're having trouble surviving and you need the defense buff, you can use carrot cookie. There's absolutely no cookie in the game that can do what Dark Choco does. So unfortunately, you definitely have to get him because for you to uh, hit the best strats, you just need Dark Choco. Uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and tune in next time.